and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Sultai Flash. That's right, we played the Simic Flash deck uh, maybe about a week ago or so. Um, the end of the 12 hour stream, we talked about how it's the meanest deck in standard because it is pretty mean to play against. And we're now taking that Simic deck and um, updating it with some removal spells. So we're adding black to the deck to be able to have removal spells. Uh, that are pretty good with cast down Tyrant Scorn. I particularly like Tyrant Scorn because it can get rid of any size creature for two mana. You know, it's it's un, it's unsummon plus basically. Um, you know, it can it can be like your unsummon, but then also destroy little creatures. So if you want to bounce your own Frilled Mystic to be able to counter another spell, you can do that. So we have that those, and then of course also with Black we got Dire Fleet Poisoner. This is a card that I'm pretty excited about playing this basically over Merfolk Trickster. Um, you know, it's it's a 2-2 a Flash Death Touch Pirate that um, most of the time it, it's going to be a removal spell also. You know, like if they're attacking with some kind of big creature, you know, they have Shifting Ceratops. Everybody's, like, trying to play these Shifting Ceratops against the Flash deck. Well, they can play their Ceratops, give it haste, and we just play our Poisoner and block it. Um, just get them just like that. But we can we can also do some kind of silly things with it uh, by giving our attacking creature uh, pirate plus one plus one and death touch if we need to. That's something that we probably won't be doing too much because I'd be playing it on our own on our own turn. But we can you know give our sailor or our cutthroat death touch and plus one plus one if we need to. We can we can mess up combat that people may not be really seeing there. <clears throat> you know like maybe they we attack with a cutthroat that they block with the creature that was going to just trade with it and we give it plus one plus one or something like that but the main reason like another big thing about it of course is it is a pirate cutthroat's a pirate sailor's a pirate so we have 12 pirates so we're playing lookout's dispersal <clears throat> as our um counter spell here instead of uh sinister sabotage because this only costs a single blue mana Makes it easier to cast. And then if we have any of these pirates in play, it's only going to be costing two instead of three mana. It's not a hard counter spell, of course, because they can pay four. But hopefully it is a hard counter spell enough. So yeah, so people are asking, so why not play an Assassin's Trophy for Planeswalkers? Because I don't like Assassin's Trophy in this kind of deck. Um, I don't. So the problem with Assassin's Trophy is giving your opponent that extra mana means that it's easier for them to double spell... And double spelling is how you beat a flash deck. The flash deck, sorry, the flash deck uh, really is really good when your opponent's just single spelling all the time, and you get to respond to that spell, or you know, like it it does a good job of um, straining the opponent's mana. But assassin's trophy, all that does is gives the opponent more mana, makes it easier for them to beat the flash deck. I don't think that. Basically, I'm just not interested in playing Assassin's Trophy whatsoever in this deck. I don't think it's it's something that I would that I want at all. Um, like the the Planeswalkers that everybody plays, or like the ones that you you know to kind of be scared of, are like you know Nissa and the Teferi's, Tamio. They're all green or white, basically. And so we got Noxious Grass over here, and I think that's good enough. I, th I think that's like that's where we want to be against the Planeswalker decks is playing Noxious Grass. Um, you know, we have plenty of answers for Planeswalkers in our, in our main deck with the, with just having counter spells or attacking them. And that's what I'm going with. Um, so there we go. That's, that's our deck. We're going to go ahead and try it. Like this deck is pretty mean. We're going to try it over in ranked. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to play five matches in ranked. See how we do with the deck. So trophy's a late game card when mana doesn't matter anymore, and that's that's not the card that I want in, in my opening hand. And the flash deck is all about the opening hand, getting ahead, staying ahead, winning the game. I don't want a late game card that you don't want in your opening hand in that kind in that style of deck. It's it's just it's not how the deck uh, plays. Wow, I'm at ninety four percent. All right, so do we want to get rid of our third land or one of these spells? Let's get rid of our third land. 
Hello. So we got plenty of stuff for creatures. Definitely hoping no Soren. Really hoping no Soren. And of course it's Soren. Depart Innistrad immediately. Or you would I bestow a mighty curse. Hey, track team. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think Swift Warden is really necessary for the deck. Um. So we're gonna have to be attacking the Soren. Ah, oh, thanks for that resub, track team. Getting some hype boats in the chat. I was certainly considering bouncing the Adanto Vanguard, but I think we had to that do it this way. Dearly. This is but a taste of my power. This is like, of course, you know, I was just talking about how I don't want um assassin's trophy and we're playing a game here where this is like basically the best possible assassin's trophy situation that you that coming up with like from an early turn and standard Nissa, in our sideboard, we have four Noxious Grasps that are good against Nissa, but Nissa's also a lot more expensive. It's a lot easier to counter Nissa because she costs five mana. The, the three mana Devastating Planeswalker is like the one that's like the... Devastating Planeswalker that's, that's hard to... <clears throat> also hard to kill because it just has so much loyalty so it's hard to attack and kill on like like to fairies easier to attack and kill and you know to fairy obviously we have the noxious graphs for as well Well, the Poisoner's ability paid off there. Six, seven, eight, nine. 
So this Aspirin's going to have Flying next turn. I'm not going to block with it still, though. I'm likely going to just be activating the Sailor here instead of playing Cutthroat. I would love these trades. Do we actually get to trade? Sweet. What? Hmm. No, it's, it's honestly kind of good for... I guess our opponent... No, it makes sense why our opponent did that. Honestly, that that was a good play by our opponent. Makes sense to do that because if they play the Sanctum Seeker first and then attack, then I can have the the Brinborn Cutthroat trade with. I can have the Brinborn Cutthroat trade with the um, the big, the really big creature, whatever its name is, the the Knight of the Ebon Legion. Because they don't have the mana to pump it anymore, and then I could save the Death Toucher for the Sanctum Seeker. Really like them to draw a land here. Just give us a turn. Just draw a land, please. So if we attack with the Spectre, if we attack with the Spectre, Spectral Sailor, then our opponent knows that we have, like, the blocker here. Because obviously we'd just be setting ourselves up to die. So that's why I like not attacking so that they are incentivized to attack in. And now they can't just draw a Sanctum Seeker to kill us. That was a close one. Yeah, one life point's all you need. That's true. All right, disfigure. Hmm. Yep, Sultai Flash. Um. Yeah, Soren is is definitely the card that I am. That I'm worried about. 
Yeah, we have we have disfigure instead of instead of craving. I don't know if I want Veil of Summer. I don't think so. We don't really need Disdainful Stroke. Not sure if I'm supposed to sideboard in anything else. Like Veil of Summer instead of Negate? No. Maybe trim some Spectral Sailors. Yeah, they, I'm sure they're going to have more. To, I'm sure they're gonna, they're definitely going to be having like cast down and stuff. Maybe we play Veil of Summers instead of some Sailors. Would I rather have Sailor over Opt? Maybe. We'll do three Sailor, one Opt. Oh, that's true. They're gonna be. They're probably gonna have like duresses and stuff too. I don't really want to trade with the, the sailor there because we want lookouts dispersal turned on. That really hurts. No Soren? No Soren's good. Mm -hmm. Alright, we're gonna have to shock next turn. Unless we draw an untapped green source. You know, Woodland Cemetery doesn't work with Basic Island. I'm so glad they actually played something here and didn't just pass the turn. But of course, they could they could just have removal if they just pass the turn though. Like if they just pass the turn, I, I play ambusher and then they have removal. Getting those champion of dusks is a big game.
All right. Man, this deck is mean. Giving like actual removal to the flash deck. Yeah, definitely intense games there. Should play more tier one decks from time to time. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, yesterday we, we had just so many uh so many donation decks to play yesterday. But I think I'm gonna do like tier one Tuesday, where I just play whatever tier one decks. Or, you know, just like, you know, maybe not maybe not even all four, but slots, but you know, like one or two tier one decks on the Tuesday. And I'm going to be keeping the rank up, su rank up Sunday like we had that before. So we're going to always have like the rank up Sundays. Why do I have to put one of these cards back? They're all so great. How am I supposed to decide? I guess it's Lookout Dispersal? Yes. We obviously need another green man before we can play either of these, but these cards are just so, so good. I think maybe put back Mystic instead of Dispersal. Hmm. I could do I can do that. That gives us less of a chance of just completely bricking. Death Touch. Why didn't they die? Doesn't that mean they're supposed to die? Isn't that what Death Touch is all about? Mmm. No green mana. Alright, well, now I'd rather just draw a counterspell. Hey, Justina. Welcome to the channel. Usually catching the YouTubes. Glad to have you here. Thanks for stopping by. No, no dredge on the docket for today. Only time will tell.
That's rude. Alright, so would I rather them gain three life and I play the other poisoner? So that'd put them to nine, then I'd be attacking down to five, and I'd have these two in play. Or I just cast down the poisoner. Yeah, I'm just gonna play this. They cast down and they don't gain the three life. Green mana? Where's this green mana at? Still haven't found it yet. Green mana. No. Cast down's not necessarily dead. They could be playing, like, basically, they're playing a lot of things that, like, they're likely playing, you know, Hero Precinct 1, Elite Guard Mage, Hostage Taker, all of those things. Could have Basilica Bell Hunt. Cast down's not a dead card. If you wish to meditate, if only we prepare. found that green mana. Come on. This is hardly my worst defeat. I have just the trick for this. Sorry I'm late. Hold that thought. Man, not having green mana is unfortunate. Hooray. Would have won this earlier, but if we would have had that green mana earlier, I don't, we I don't know if we're gonna win it from here. Doesn't look like it. Sure hope they don't have another one of those. Hurry. Mm. So close. We were just too we just stumbled too much. They definitely look really control heavy. They, this does not look like Esper Hero. From the cards we were seeing there. Okay. So this is 67. Do I really want Ceratops? I think so, is a question. I think so. Do I really want Poisoner? Maybe not. Maybe I don't want Poisoner. Is Ceratops actually better than Poisoner?
Do I want this many counter spells when they, you know, have like their Teferis and stuff? All right, that's what we're going to go with. We're going to go two Poisoner, one Ceratops, and not play all the Disdainful Strokes. Play duress. Certainly he was considering playing Thought Erasure instead of like Disdainful Stroke. Even though Thought Erasure isn't instant speed, I feel like it's still probably pretty good. Hey, what's up, Code Junk? Thanks so much for that resub. Keeping on that eight month streak, you are amazing, Code Junk. I'm chilling too. Playing some mean old. Some mean old flash. So playing the sailor means that my that means that we get to kill the Teferi no matter what. Like, you know, they minus. I've got it. You know, obviously, obviously if they minus, we were still gonna be able to kill Teferi, but if they plus we get to kill Teferi. Also. It's only a matter of time. My prowess is unmatched, put thoughtfulness before action. I kind of want to draw a card here. We play Ambusher, then they play Kaya's Wrath. Uh, interesting technique. Kitty. Awesome characters. Reason to be attacking Narset. Hey, Chris. Good old fat Chris getting that sub in. Y'all get some hype in the chat for our new sub. Thank you so much. 
for that support. I appreciate that. Because of the whole like gain two life with Othakaya, we're basically attacking for three for just attacking them. So I'm just gonna attack them. And it's Casey joining in on the hype. Thank you so much there, Casey. Y'all are awesome. Sub number seven. Three away from a sub goal. Y'all are a little newer to the channel. What the sub goals do is every 20 total sub goals over time, I do a 12 hour stream and looking at it, we are at 13 currently, 13 total sub goals. So 13 out of 20. So we're getting pretty close to another to another 12 hour stream. Do I play Cutthroat also? I'm definitely playing Ambusher. The problem with playing both, of course, is that they have the third Kaya's Wrath. That can't be very likely they have a third Kaya's Wrath, right? They would have to have third counter Kaya's Wrath, and I would also have to not draw like my first counter spell of the game. Yeah, <laughs> so that's the person with four wolves. <laughs> they probably don't have three Kaiserats. I have four wolves over here, though. <laughs> it's a lot of Othakayas. I think I still want to keep the two poisoners. Justicer's portal. I don't. I would rather have God's willing for the Kal Kalia deck, but it, to be honest, I don't want either. I don't think that. I don't think that those like. I don't think Justice's Portal is a very good standard card. Vitu Gazi. I like Vitu Gazi. The other time we played Simic Flash, I had the one Vitu Gazi was certainly killing people. I actually kind of like the card. Frilled Mystic is a whole lot better than Ceratops. Frilled Mystic's just an incredibly good card. There's no reason to take out Frilled Mystic. In. Certainly in this matchup, and kind of in any matchup. Maybe if they're playing like a, a Gruul deck where everything is like can't be countered and their creatures are really big, maybe, maybe you take out. Take one out there, but that's about it.
If I would have had this disdainful stroke, I would have put that on the bottom instead of the lookout's dispersal. Yay, no thought erasure. So we have the two mana counter and we just drew negates. We have another counter. We have we have the counter for Teferi. Let's go with negate. Oh, yeah, the music is quieter today. There you go. It should be about the same now. I guess it, it was actually turned down a little bit. Hey, what's up, Matter? Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub there. Awesome. Thanks, Matter. Competitively, do you, do you prefer Simic or Soul Tie? So far, I've been. I mean, we won't, we're only in our second match here with Soul Tie, but I've been. I've certainly been impressed with it so far. I'm going to go this way. I guess the dispersal is losing power kind of quickly here. And I'd love to have the five mana and be able to draw into that and play it. One card left. Let's give it a try. Alright, scooped it up. They could have just top decked another Kai's Wrath, but they were done. Uh, did they resolve any spells? Actually, now that you think... Like, they resolved that last one, that removal spell. Was that it? Was that the first thing they resolved? And people say all you need is a little Teferi. They had multiple little Teferis. I'll try it on the play. Even if I'm a turn, if I'm a turn slower because the tap lands on the play, it's probably not as big of a deal. You know, they get a couple things down. We got some cast downs. Well, that's unfortunate. Certainly hoping to draw land, though. Looks like we're playing a mirror. There, with them just being blue green.
I guess I'm supposed to scatter that. I guess I was supposed to, yeah, I was supposed to scatter that. Or actually disdainful stroke. Man, what am I, yeah, I should just counter that. They have no lands. All right, we'll, we'll disdainful stroke the next one. There's gonna be more of them. All right, we'll scatter this. We know they still have four spells in hand, which isn't ideal. I want them to keep playing lands. So otherwise we'll run out of spells first. Come on. Our deck's not helping us. We just have five spells still over there. I'm so I'm so jealous. Alright, you got us. There we go. <laughs> yep, land go time. Two ambushers down. Uh, it only gives attacking pirates. They play like a 2-2. You two -two. don't get to pump it. I don't think like playing a, you know, if they have another Frilled Mystic, which I think it's, I honestly think it's very likely that my opponent has Frilled Mystic. Considering they threw out a Frilled Mystic earlier, like for nothing. And so I don't think it's worth it to just to play these things into a Frilled Mystic, give them the two for one ability. We have the creature on the battlefield. We are ahead. Make them play to us. So let's say I cast down and let's say they frilled Mystic. Then what am what am I doing? If I cast cast down and they frilled Mystic it.
just gonna be patient. Not Frilled Mystic. Hey, Sothian. Hey, what's up, Master? What is going on with the, the stream decker? Let me see if this works. Okay, I think that's that's what was going wrong. The deck command was messed up. All right, so now that, that should be up, up to date now. Okay, so what we're going to do here is I think I want to take out counter spells. And kill stuff. I think I want to do that. I think I want to take out counter spells and kill stuff. Um, Frilled Mystic, though. Spectral Sailor. Opt. Let's get rid of the, we'll take rid of the Ops and one Sailor. I don't want to take out Frilled Mystic, though. That card's just too good. My cat's name is Hawkeye. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to put back the second Cutthroat, but with only having the two lands, I thought putting back... Putting back the second Ceratops makes sense. Now, obviously how that's worked, how we've drawn land land off the top, including a second green source, I wish that we had... I wish we had that other Ceratops. So attacking with the Cutthroat first, if our opponent plays like a Trickster or whatever, they play something to block the Cutthroat, then I uh, just Night Pack Ambusher. Alright, I'm 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 pretty ready just to call Sultai 
the better choice over blue green. Like blue green has no removal. You play a Ceratops, they die. Sultai, like I have all the cast downs and the noxious grasps and the the poisoners. I have so many answers to Ceratops. Like why would you just have a deck that's just dead to Ceratops? I liked the Kalia and Friends deck. I I changed a good amount of stuff at the end of the video and and I also uploaded um in the YouTube video I uploaded both decks, the the one we played and the updated version. I think our mana was a little off, our sideboard was off, and I, I didn't like the just the I didn't like the various removal spells that we had in there. Frilled Mystic on curve is yeah, incredibly important. It's like it's the best thing to be doing on curve. This is a tough spot here. Whether to shock with the watery graves, so then I have opt plus, you know, two mana interaction, which our whole deck is like two mana interaction. All right, well, drawing the other land makes it easier. Because I was going to say, we'd still want like the four mana. didn't show up uh refresh your channel cali commuter sometimes when you resub you have to just refresh and there'll be a message there i ain't scared of no wrath All right, do I heat up and eat a frozen pizza or order a pizza and pick it up? You live in Costa Rica, so the options are limited. There's no Pizza Hut, Domino's, Papa John's, etc. There is a really good pizza place, though, and it's a 10-minute drive from the house. If it's a really good place that's 10 minutes away from your house, I feel like that's the play. I do like me some frozen pizzas too, though. I certainly said this before. I think if, if I could choose any, any food that's not healthy to be healthy, I think I'd choose pizza. I'll probably eat, like, two frozen pizzas a week as an estimate. Uh, yeah, I actually, yeah, I, I go with the DiGiorno pizzas. I like their thin crust. I got the DiGiorno thin crust. You can improve frozen pizza by ignoring cooking instructions and cooking 485 for eight to nine minutes. That's interesting. I I ignore cooking instructions and always go with 375 and then um and then just 
I go 375 and just take it out when it's ready. Or like when I yeah, like whenever I think it's ready. So what is what's the what's the pizza like when you cook it at four eighty five? What's it like? Okay, you're you're going frozen pizza now. Okay, you're gonna add your own toppings. It's the best improvements on a normal pepperoni and cheese. I I like pepperoni and pineapple together. Maybe the alliteration kind of grows on me. But I, I'm a fan of some pepperoni and pineapple. This is hardly my worst defeat. Blah, 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 blah. I know my responsibility. Well, that's not game, no, because they still get to minus. Yeah, we, we talked about it the other day. I think that the people that... Um, my opinion is that people that uh, look down upon pineapples on pizza just go. do that because they think it's the cool thing to do and and are missing out. Like they're just not fans of delicious flavor, and they just want to be edgy and think that that's a a cool thing to say. Now what? Going down to eight. Obviously, allergies should take... That takes precedence, you know, if you're allergic to something. Yeah, I, I don't... Yeah, I agree with calling it Hawaiian. Just throw pineapples on a pizza and then call it Hawaiian. That's problematic. That's unnecessary. Ham and pineapple was ordered a lot. I See, I like pepperoni and pineapple. But again, maybe it is... Maybe it is that I'm a sucker for alliteration. This isn't a fight you can win. Not with that attitude. Let's skip to the good part. Hmm. So our opponent is untapping two lands with Teferi here. If I just play Ambusher, they could have two mana removal. You know, maybe they don't block with the hero, but then like the hero starts making like a bunch of tokens, like if they get to play a few things. The safest play is to counter this, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. Obviously, we're not attacking Teferi anymore, especially with the Sothakaya, us at 8, all that kind of stuff. Keep up the pace. What I call pepperoni is actually spicy salami. Hmm. Spicy salami. Pepperoni. It's more fun to say pepperoni. Uh, 
Oh, that's tough. If I try drawing a card, we don't get to play Cutthroat. And there's no... It's not likely that we draw a counter. I guess it, we could draw a counter, but it's not super likely. If I don't counter it, we, we do get to play Cutthroat and Ambusher. No, I'm drawing a card. All right. They got me. Yeah, I love yeah, I love euros. Um yeah, I've had yeah, I've had a euro pizza. Yeah, it was delicious. Uh I don't I don't know chicken. I I haven't played modern in like a year. I don't I don't have any opinions on that format of like what to play. Not really, Donvi. No, I'm... I have, you know, transitioned to being full-time streamer, and I like it. Yeah, I like all the peppers, yeah. Getting a lot of peppers on a pizza. Is a good option. One, two, three, four. I train every day. No one is more to hone your prowess. Playing like Cutthroat and Negate there just makes like Teferi Tuck really good. <clears throat> they want to ultimate Teferi? Do I let them ultimate to fairy? No, probably not. No time for a break. I hope I hope my channel's not going offline. Hey dark dude. Welcome, welcome to the channel. Glad you're enjoying the, the YouTube videos and everything. What happens if I attack out? So they'd have a, a thief block a sailor. They would chump like a 4 4, chump the 3 3, have the hero block the cutthroat. My attack with everything.
So we're need we're gonna need to get these one ones out of here to. to kill our opponent. Do they just get to do that? No, I'm not on Twitter. Wish we had one more mana. It's just how manas work. Do not want them getting another one of those things. That is for sure. Wish we had one more mana though. Should have main phase drawn. Would have been able to, to do that also. You know what? I'm not done yet. Hey, Zerf. Don't think we're going to win this game. Oh, yeah, that's true. Drawing on my turn because the Narset would not have been a good idea. <sighs> that's a fair point. We haven't seen any removal spells yet. Hmm. It's just so likely that our opponent hits, like, hits a removal spell. Just keep that land in, in hand to kind of bluff a little bit. You are removed from time itself. All right, they got three cards. What do they got? I know eighty-eight ways to defeat you. Pick one, meditate, and <clears throat> I doubt that Narset actually knows eighty-eight ways. I'd be willing to call that bluff. Cool. Cleared out two lands. I got like another land. There we go. <laughs> Maybe seventy-five or seventy-six. Yeah, I'm calling out Narset. I'm not. I'm not believing eighty-eight. Dun -dun, dun -dun. Let's get all these noxious grasps. What don't we want? So yeah, they're th hero, thief, and uh, hostage taker. They're definitely going to be like heavy hostage taker. I think I want to keep all the cast downs and scorns. Maybe not all the scorns. Yeah, scorns are probably just fine. 
we like taking out like poisoner hmm poisoner's good I'll cut disdainful stroke cut scatter Maybe one scorn with having all these noxious, noxious grasps. Hmm. All right, two scorn. We'll kind of see like if you know like what their sideboard plan is see if like what we want to do more i'm kind of just keeping like the same kind of main deck plan for the most part could see taking out like some poisoners but poison taking out poisoner makes lookouts dispersal worse but there's obviously cards that are situationally good you know like veil of summer could be awesome of course uh also, Ceratops could be very good at times. I probably should be playing the Veil of Summers. I just, you know, like, we don't have, like, a lot of time to sideboard, and... Tough call. I'd love to be able to get the cutthroat in, of course, first before we have to start dispersaling, but we'll see what our life is like. Maybe they have a Teferi, maybe they have a box of chocolates. You never know. Sure. The that card's not very good. I don't know why they didn't sideboard that card out, honestly. Seems like that'd be a card I'd sideboard out. Just the trick for this. It's just something we don't have to counter. And can just attack. And they have a good amount of creatures in their deck. We saw them just... They whiffed on it last, turn, last game. They whiffed on it again here. I feel like that's a card they sideboard out. Or should, at least. Bleh. Yeah, this would have been a perfect time to veil of veil of summer. Oh, I, yeah, Dark Dude, I loved that Tulsimer Night Pack ambusher interaction. Those loved it. Beyond the veil of reality are lost. Put thoughtfulness before action. Not prepared for this. So I could shock in there, so like if we draw a spectral sailor and, and draw a spectral sailor or an opt, we can cast it. Let's not do that. 
Let's not get down too low. Can't really... Can't really let that resolve. And that should be game. So we're going to bounce our Spectral Sailor so they don't gain life. Replay Spectral Sailor. Make this thing a 7-6. Noxious Grasp, kill the 1-1. One, one. And boom goes the dynamite. Alright, I'm, I'm pretty ready to say that Sultai is like... Strictly better than Simic. Hey, we got a chest too. More wow cards. Thanks, Chris. Ugh. There we go. <laughs> Just add black to any deck, make it better. It's probably true. We got a pirate hand here. We're going to get our Parati workout in. <laughs> Dire Flea Poisoner is cool, but yeah, I certainly understand not wanting to craft Dire Fleet Poisoner if you don't have them with them rotating out kind of soon. Hey, Ian Ray. I want to trade here. Nah. Nah, we're going to be killing them. We just got to draw some lands. And then they're, they'll be dead. Cool. The Kalia deck was was fun to play. I liked Kalia. The card has an awesome animation. I I did make a good amount of changes to the deck afterwards. It's not likely they have Yeah, like that's fine. Let's say it's not likely they have Soren. Alright, well we're not we're not like just killing them now that our our cutthroat died. Conquistador. So vicious. The vicious Conquistador really should be the 1-1 one, one death touch life linker. Let's 
a good card. We've certainly had games where we haven't had the double green. That's been the toughest thing. We have had untapped blue on one quite a bit. All right, Disfigure comes on in, taking out Disdainful Stroke. And then Veil of Summer over one Sailor, one Opt. And that's it. Uh, Panico? I'm gonna go with Panico. Hey, t hey, hey, Panico. This this is definitely a hand that could lose on the draw here. Shotgun. I I need to find some more things to do on two. I think I need to use this this one mana right now for this opt. That'll work. All right, so I'm going to save, save this figure. Yeah. We're going to save this figure and use, use my mana better here of using two, two mana for this. Um, this figure, of course, takes out a Danto Vanguard, which it's certainly possible they have. Uh, it, it could allow us to double spell next turn. And, uh, and even if they had like, if they were playing the Knight of the Ebon Legion, we would be able to kill the Knight of the Ebon Legion also, so we we're gonna be good there too. Um Yeah, we, we should shock so we can counter something. So I'm taking four, going down to nine. But if they have Soren, like I'm gonna need to counter Soren. All right, they probably don't have something I need to counter if they're just going straight to combat. So actually, I'm going to disfigure here. This does mean I don't get to counter. But I was I was most worried about Soren. Oh. Well, that's I guess that's a planeswalker you can play second main also. Alright, well I should have should have taken it, could have dispersed that. Hmm. Your light will cleave the darkness. That was uh, Bring it on. That was the <laughs> decision that's gonna kill me. Yeah, I should have should have just taken the three. There's a reason why I shocked in there. I bet a Dante Vanguard wasn't gonna kill me. I should have just taken it. Got greedy.
Hey, Duriel. I'm not being that Gideon. So they're playing Gideon, huh? Let's get a couple of these things in here. It wasn't really necessarily mana screw that killed us. I, I needed to. I needed to counter the Gideon. That was. It was kind of my fault. Essence scatter is in the main deck. It's not in the sideboard. Alright, well, I'm putting the Spectral Sailor back even though we get to cast that. But we're going to need to draw green mana. These these ambushers can... They can certainly win the game. And so I want cards that can win the game. And they qualify. No, 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 no. Yay! Yay! Yay. What a poisoner. <clears throat> oh, come on, green mana. Come on, green mana. Okay, we need green mana. Just grasp just sucks. We're going to draw a green source, and so we're going to be playing these the next three turns. So I'm just going to cast the Noxious Grasp here and just make it a deal four damage to them. Well. This is what I get for not countering the Gideon, you know, not leaving up the counter spell for the Gideon. We're still in this. We just got to draw a green source. We're not out of it. Come on, Hinchelin Harbor. Hinchelin Harbor. Off the top. There it is. It's Hinchelin Harbor. It's friend, Overgrown Tomb. Just like I said, Hinterland Harbor's friend, Overgrown Tomb. That's some green, Hawkeye. We got green mana. No. I don't like that champion. They're down to eight.
So I could attack, and they the problem with attacking is they double block. And honestly... The ambusher is probably not worth the like the ambusher is probably more valuable than those two creatures. <laughs> yeah, Hawkeye's the best. We'll be attacking with all these wolves next turn. The tokens. Alright. Can't kill the rooster and you can't kill the wolves. Can't hold them down. That's a 5 0 for what looked to be a really, really good deck. So we kind of were playing against the same kind of stuff though, because what we we played against Esper, we played against vampires twice, we played against Esper twice, one one of them Esper hero, one Esper control, you know, with like main deck a bunch of rats and stuff. Um, and what was our other matchup? I don't remember the other matchup. Played something else. Scapeshift is still is not super popular right now, to be honest. Just online. I, I Oh yeah, we played a blue green flash mirror. That's right. Well they were just blue green flash and we just that was really, really easy. Um Yeah, because like against blue green flash, we have we have shifting ceratops, which is awesome. They have ceratops against us, but we have noxious grasps, cast downs, and poisoners that all kill ceratops. Yeah, I think this is... I, th I loved the, the blue-green flash matchup. I think that we're really, really favored there. Um, but, you know, like, especially after sideboarding. Uh, you know, game one, we kind of have a lot of the same stuff. It's, it's pretty even game one, but we got good removal. So, yeah, I feel like... I feel like this is just a, a just an upgrade over... over Simic, honestly. We did struggle with getting the double green sometimes, but I do have the 16 green sources with the temple being the 16th. So it's still, it's not like we have none. Like 16 is a, a good amount, I thought, but we did struggle with that a little bit. Yeah, Poisoner, Poisoner was awesome. Um, really liked it. There's times, not not happening very often, but there's times you do that that second park if like one of these pirates death touch. But yeah, just giving the pirate, like having another pirate to turn on Lookout's Dispersal was really good. Like, Lookout's Dispersal was awesome. Two mana, hard counter, basically, all the time early on in the game. Lookout's Dispersal was really, really good for us. Um, I don't think I would change anything right now. I, I think one thing I would look look to changing, you know, if if Vampires, you know, if they were pretty popular, if that, if that matchup kind of ends up being... If that matchup ends up being more challenging than what we had for the two matches there, plus other aggro matchups if if other aggro matchups and stuff end up being uh more challenging then maybe we want another disfigure in the sideboard that's a card that's pretty easy to add there i think maybe to make room for it i think four shifting ceratops is probably overkill so that's that's somewhere you could you could probably trim on ceratops to get more uh more early removal if that's something that we need to, to do um I don't... Yeah, we didn't play against Feather, so I'm not exactly sure. Usually, like, counter spells are good against Feather because they need their spells to resolve to get them back in their hand. So we do have... You know, we have good removal against Feather, like, 
I guess Cast Down doesn't kill Feather. Never mind, but Tyrant Scorn does. Cast Down kills a lot of the other things in their decks. We have, like, pretty decent removal there. Noxious Grasp is really good in that matchup, too. And Counter Magic. I would think we'd be okay against Feather. Um, but, yeah, yeah, we beat Esper both times we played it. Yeah, this is just a, a really good deck. I think if, if you're somebody who kind of liked the Simic Flash deck... Whoops. I think this is an upgrade on Simic, honestly. And, yeah, going 5-0 there in Mythic. Um, haven't gone 5-0 in Mythic in a little while, and this deck felt really, really powerful. I we talked. I talked about Assassin's Trophy at the beginning of the video, but basically, short answer is I absolutely hate Assassin's Trophy in this deck. I think it goes completely... I think Assassin's Trophy goes completely against what makes the Flash deck good uh, with... Um, with Assassin's Trophy allowing the opponent, getting them the extra mana, allowing them to double spell earlier. It's not a card that I'm interested in playing whatsoever. No, Dire Fleet Poisoner wasn't... It, Dire Fleet Poisoner was basically good all the time. I didn't feel like having four Dire Fleet Poisoners was too much or anything. And again, it's another pirate to turn on Lookout's Dispersal, which is really important. But um, Poisoner basically always trades up. You know, like it's for a two mana two two, it's always trading up like for bigger creatures because the death touch. And if they have like problematic creatures that you don't have removal for, you know, you get to poison or block them. Uh, I don't want crafty cup cup purse purse for well cup purse for scape shift X. So what is this thing? Each token that would be created under an opponent's control this turn is created under your control instead. Jeez. That's just game over. I didn't even realize this thing was a card. Yeah. If if Scapeshift gets if Scapeshift is getting if it's really big, which I, I just haven't really been playing against Scapeshift at all. But if you start getting playing against Scapeshift, absolutely take out a Ceratops, put one of these in. We re you really don't need four Ceratops in the sideboard. So, yeah, you can take out a Ceratops for one of these. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's a very specific hate card. They they cast Scapeshift. You play this, they lose. Obviously, it doesn't... You know, they have, like, their little Teferis and stuff to try to stop you. But, yeah, like, they... They kind of lose to that. Um, Ashiok is, is, of course, another pretty good card against Scapeshift. But, yeah. Merfolk Mistbinder works. I don't think that I don't think that works. You're thinking of a different card. Mist Caller. You're thinking of Mist Caller. Something you just sacrifice and keep them from entering. Anyway, um, there we go. That's Soul Tie Flash. So if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and if so, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. But that's it here for Soul Tie Flash. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for the next video.